If you're going to be successful with God, you'll have to burn up witchcraft spirits in your life through the Holy Ghost baptism, the Holy Ghost and fire. There was a reason why John the Baptist was saying, there's coming one that's mightier than I. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That fire of God is there to remove spirits that cause you to entertain, love, or live in a way that God hates, despises, disagrees with, is grieved by. So the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, that fire of God, it has several different functionalities. One functionality is to anoint you, which is to empower you. The other functionality is to, um, to remove the stains, the strongholds, of things and ways that are evil. So let me just say this to you. You could pray a prayer right now and say, Lord, I receive you into my heart. Until you receive the fire baptism of the Holy Spirit, you still going to smoke. You still going to lie. You still going to have things about you that's evil and demonic. You're not, you're, you're changed according to the truth of the gospel but you're not changed according to the fruit that you produce. Until you receive the fire of the Holy Spirit, you will not have the unction to live clean. You will not. And saints, when you pray, you're pitting in an application. Me and you both know that when you pit in the application, you have to wait for them to call you in. For orientation, you got to wait for them to call you in. To do the uh, training, they, they got, you got to wait for them to call you in to, for the interview. And you got to wait for them to actually hire you. So we have those systems set up so that even you could have in your soulish mind, uh, have an idea of what happens when you pray. When you pray, God receives the application. You have to wait on the Holy Ghost for him to anoint you, for him to guide you, for him to live inside of you and walk with you. You have to wait. He not just hopping on nobody. The Holy Ghost is not promiscuous. He not a whole. He don't just come upon you. He tests you out. He weigh you out. He measure you out. He try you out. He challenge you. He pitch you in situations you don't want to be. He give you instructions you don't want to have. He give you assignments you really don't want to complete. Look at the life of Jonah. He did not want to go to Nineveh. Elijah did not want to continue being a prophet while Jezebel was threatening him. So if you look at the positions that people are pit in, that's the Holy Ghost. Abram really would not want to kill his only begotten son. That was legitimate. God didn't recognize um, uh, the other the other big head. God only recognized the one that he prescribed. So in life, that's the same way with the Holy Ghost. He always going to pitch you somewhere that you don't want to be. Tell you something you don't want to hear. So stop being a nigga. Every time you think that the Holy Ghost is saying something you don't want to hear, you run, you hide, you become disinterested, your work ethic change, your productivity change, your momentum change, your faith change, your hope change, your expectation, your happiness change. Stop being a nigga. Holy Ghost not just telling you about finances. Holy Ghost telling you about all the spirits that have ruled Woman and men for ages in the same bloodline that you have, the same ways, the same identity, the same mindsets, the same reactions, personality traits that were demonic. They are traveling from generation to generation. And if you say that you are Holy Ghost friend, if you say that you are God's woman and God's man, he should be able to change you at the drop of a dime whenever he chooses. The Holy Ghost not revealing everything about your ass to you. Holy Ghost not telling you everything about your ass. Holy Ghost be merciful. Holy Ghost be calming down and giving you a chance to breathe and receive and grow. He not telling you everything about your ass. So when he come tell you something about you, shut the hell up and take it because he didn't tell you everything about you. 
Stop every time the Holy Ghost come to you and start telling you about you. Oh, 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 you ain't tell me that about myself before. So it's not a problem now. You overreacting, Holy Ghost. How come you ain't tell me that five weeks ago? Because, nigga, you were struggling with something else five weeks ago. The Holy Ghost be giving you a chance to catch your breath and get it right and learn and receive and get trained and build yourself up. He don't be hitting you with everything. So when the Holy Ghost is walking alongside of you, the Holy Ghost be compromising. Because you got about 15 stuff wrong with you and he just dealing with three. So when he get to the other 12, you got an attitude. Ugh. The Holy Ghost, the one supposed to have an attitude. Because he been pitting up with your broke behind, with your messed up behind, and he not saying everything to you that's wrong with you. He be merciful. So when he training you and chastening you and giving you the truth, stop rejecting the truth and running from the truth. I'm talking about witchcraft spirits on here because many people that are believers got witchcraft spirits on them. That mean that you, got, you are governed by the behaviors of a witch. You have ways in you that are from a witch. They are not from God. The attitude is not from God. The choice of, of focus is not from God. Your schedule, not from God. The way that you view things is not from God. Some of y'all in witchcraft right now because you live by law and not grace. So you beat up on yourself all the time because you in witchcraft. That's what a witch does. A witch is stupid, man. When you at peace with God, God is moving and moving you along. You go right back there and start terrorizing yourself. You in witchcraft. There's different levels of witchcraft. Witchcraft is not just all, you know, it's just utter outright rebellion. There's some forms of rip witchcraft where you underneath law. So you constantly keep condemning yourself. Am I doing something wrong? Shut the hell up, baby. What the hell wrong with you? Stop talking about am I doing something wrong? Nigga, just do right. You ain't, you up there interviewing yourself every minute, interviewing your fruit every minute. It's not that hard. We make decisions. That's all we do. We make decisions. We make decisions and the Holy Ghost wake you up every day for you to make new decisions. You ain't got to be up there, up there beating yourself, terrorizing yourself. Am I doing something wrong? Just do right. Witchcraft will have you in a mental boxing match with your own self. You wasting mental time. You wasting emotional energy. You could be growing. You could be praying in the Holy Ghost, praising God, focusing on your current assignments. And you allowing the enemy to still be the master of your meditation, the master of your focus, the master of how you live, the master of how you view things. And you could be currently just going from one faith to the next, one glory to the next and accomplishing the will of God about you. Witchcraft spirits, they will never let you succeed in the presence of your prophet. Witchcraft spirits, when they on you, you'll go opposite to your prophet of God. The father said this to me because I'm, I'm prophesying a lot of stuff these last couple of weeks and all of these stuff is happening. Now I'm talking stuff like bomb, 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 bomb. And the father was telling me today, he said, son, every man that believes you, I will bless. And every man that doesn't believe you, I will curse. This is what he told me. And he told me, tell people that I said, believe my prophet. I didn't say believe them if they seem like they're right. I didn't say believe them if, if they seem like they doctrinal or they seem like they traditional. They seem like they are safe. He said, I said, believe you. He said, anybody that don't believe you, you know, my spirit is not in them. Because he said, I don't got 15 spirits. 
He said the same spirit that I'm possessing your body with is the same spirit that will hear you if it's in another person. So he said, watch people, how they act, watch how they respond, watch their life, watch how they behave, study them because you will know who I'm in and who I'm not in. You don't have to guess. You don't have to say, oh, maybe this person just having a bad day. Maybe they're not just in a right mood. Maybe they're not feeling good today. You could know who I'm in because my spirit is not 15 and 20. It's one spirit, one Lord, one baptism, one God, one word, one kingdom, one. One is not 15 and if somebody does not have the spirit of Christ, they are none of his. I think that's Romans chapter 8, verse 9 and on. If someone don't have the spirit of Christ, they are none of his. And people that have the spirit of Christ, they receive the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy is the what? Is the testimony of Jesus. So Jesus is testifying. So the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Jesus testifies through the spirit of prophecy. I mean, he talks, he declares, he give word, he converses, he converses, he have all type of assignments, he reveal things, spirit of prophecy. Witchcraft spirits, they rule people and they keep them from believing their prophet. God gives you a prophet in life so that you would have the advantage and the power and the momentum for you to achieve all success in every area of your life. Soul, body, spirit, finances, relationships, decisions, every pathway. What I'm saying to you is if you don't get baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire, you're going to be a liar. You're going to be a tricky person. You are going to be a person that deceive your own damn self all the time. You so deceptive that if God came to you with orange draws, you would say that they was yellow. That nature inside of you is the nature of a snake. It is the nature of a witchcraft spirit. It don't matter if you male or female, witchcraft spirits just govern bodies where people's hearts are not right. When your heart is not right, witchcraft spirits can rule you. You get offended at truth. You hide from the divine path that God picked for your life. You try to select your own pathway of servanthood towards God. You try to choose how you going to get to heaven? Witchcraft spirits. Witchcraft spirits, you create your own Christianity. You create your own commandments. You create your own virtue. You create your own kingship. And none of the stuff is led by the Holy Ghost. It is just witchcraft spirits. When witchcraft spirits is on you, if you get corrected, you'll have attitude. When witchcraft spirits is on you, if you hear the truth and it don't rub you right, it touches the demon with which you love, it bothers you. When you have witchcraft spirits on you, you'll hear yourself cussing out your leader. You'll hear yourself disagreeing with your leader. You'll hear yourself talk your ass. Not nobody else. You will be able to identify yourself. You will hear your own self talking about your leader in your mind. You'll hear yourself arguing. No, that's not right. No, 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 no. That's the demons that rule you. Some of you all, that's what, that's what you want. You want to sleep with a man of God. You, you really, you really do. You wish you could sleep with a man of God. You have dreams. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. All that stuff is pleasure stuff. If you really met a true man of God, we're going to break you and make you. We're going to take you out of Satanism. That's our anointing. That's what we do. We grade you. We examine you. We measure you. We investigate you. 
and we deal with the soul. That's why your soul is the location that all type of stuff be going through that soul because that soul was already demonic. That soul was already demonic. All we do is we just bring out what's in that soul. You don't know your soul. Nobody knows their soul. That's why a young little boy could be looking at himself talking about, oh, I want to play with dolls. I like boys. They don't know who they is. Number one, God didn't make them to like boys. But their soul is in a place where it needs somebody to break it and change it and break the witchcraft spirits. We have a lot of people right now that are struggling with same-sex demons. You know why? Because when they were small, nobody saw the witchcraft spirits. Nobody saw that their soul was in witchcraft and they gave them food. They gave them what they wanted. They gave them niceness and nobody was there prophetic to say, no, you are demon possessed. You are not supposed to like your same sex. That's why your parts don't fit. That's why you ain't got the same ability to enter one another because it is forbidden. Nobody was able to say that. You know why? Because witchcraft spirits. And witchcraft spirits, it will actually subdue people that see you're wrong. It'll subdue them not to even confront it. You ever seen a woman, she goes to church, but she got a homosexual little uh, a nephew, and you, have, you never see her ever rebuke them, do it, do it. Why? Because witchcraft spirits are her too. You ever notice that? People see each other in sin, they see each other, and they claim to be God's friend, and they'll be at peace with the person. You see them driving right in the car, chilling, having fun, going on dates, going on restaurants, moving, and they just chilling. And you're like, wait, do, do they got the Holy Ghost, or this person don't got the, who don't got the Holy Ghost? None of them got the Holy Ghost. They got witchcraft spirits. When witchcraft spirits on you, you will not only condone your mess, you will justify someone else's. The word of God say in Proverbs, it says he that justifies the wicked and he that condemns the pure, both of them are an abomination to the Lord. If one is doing wrong and one justifies it and one is doing right and you condemn it, it says both of them are an abomination to the Lord. But we see it all the time. Because people are governed by witchcraft spirits. That's the problem. We have women and men that's growing up in church, but they're not growing up in God. They're not growing in grace. They're growing in place. So they grow in a place, but they don't grow in grace. So if you deal with the person, you're still dealing with a demon that has a lot of biblical knowledge. They could tell you about prophecy. They could tell you about apostolic. They could tell you about power. They could tell you about angels. But this is still a person that have witchcraft spirits. So how do you see witchcraft spirits? Is it when you have sex with a person? No, you can't see no witchcraft spirits through no sex. Sex is the most pleasurable realm of a relationship. Sex is the most pleasurable realm of a interaction. You will never see any demon manifest fully in pleasure. That's why you could see two people, even in the world, they could be taking pictures on Instagram. And then when they get apart from each other, now they cussing each other out. They doing Instagram videos on each other. You know why? Because apart from pleasure, their spirit wasn't together. Apart from sex, they was in two different levels of wickedness. And now the wickedness is in combat. Why? Because you don't find nothing out in sex. You find out everything via instructions, words, corrections. Same with a child. If you look at children, children say, I want to go with the person that lets me have my way. You ever notice, why does a child, you say you're going over to your grandfather's house. You, they like, oh, no, 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 I don't want to go. And you find out why they, why they don't want to go over to their grandfather's house. It's because the grandfather don't let them watch Coco Melon. It's because the grandfather ain't got them on their phone. The grandfather telling them, hey, let's, let's do something. Let's play a game together. The father got a di grandfather got a different 
literature of a structure. And so the child say, no, I want to go over here. Then you find out why does the child want to go over there? Because the child could do what they want, say what they want, wear what they want, have what they want, be who they want. And they lean towards wherever their soul is not being challenged. That's the same way it is with ministry. People often leave ministries that they are assigned to follow to go follow ministries that's not challenging their soul. That's why your leader will know who you is. You'll hop over to another ministry and camouflage yourself like you so loyal and faithful and committed. And you, I've seen people do that, by the way. I've seen people do that, right? And I'm, I'm like, I know who you is. That person don't know who you is, but they're going to find out. And they always do. They always do. They always do. And saints, what you don't understand that even people will snitch on you. People will snitch on you about you because people watch you from afar. And saints, what, what you got to understand, when witchcraft spirits is on a person, you're not able to submit yourself to what God has for you. You're not able to submit yourself to what God uh, is calling you to do. And, and there's all type of Things that get you and cause you to miss the will of God for your life because you don't want to be challenged in your soul. You don't want somebody to tell you what to do. You don't want somebody to mold you out of your secrecy and the ways that's not of God. Even David said, search me. Find out if there be any evil way in me, any wicked way in me. David wanted to be right with God. That's the difference. People are not wanting to be right with God. You get offended when God is making you right. You get offended when God is having you become what you've been declaring that you was. If some of you are here, hear here how you've been talking to people. You know, I know that God got a calling on my life. I know God going to do great things through me. You know, I know that I'm a man of God. I know that God got a powerful anointing on my life. I know he going to use me. You know, I, 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 all this stuff. Watch this here. You notice, woman, they say, oh, I'm a prophetess. I'm a woman of God. I, I'm, I, I'm somebody that, you know, God got his hand on, you know. Then God actually put his hand on you. Then God start challenging you as a man. You shouldn't have no clap back. You should actually be happy. You should actually be rejoicing that God is giving you the time of day to show forth your genuine nature, your purity, your freedom, your liberty. Freedom don't have to be hidden. It could be displayed easily. It could be articulated easily. When freedom is on your life, you don't have to force nothing. It will be seen because this is who you are. But if you find yourself trying to restrain and fight back, oh, oh, ooh, ooh, I'm trying to stop that. You're not free. You got witchcraft spirits on you. And saints, God know how to pitch you in a situation for you to see the witchcraft spirits that's on you. Some of you are not delivered. You have a fantasy of deliverance because when the time comes, you're trying to hold yourself back. You're not free. Freedom don't have to do all of that. Jesus was not in his life talking about, oh, I'm tempted in all points, but I can't sin. Oh, no, I can't sin. I can't sin. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Don't tempt the Lord thy God. Confidence. Freedom, confidence, patience, confidence, endurance, confidence, continuance, confidence, wisdom demonstrated, confidence, excellence, confidence, true worship, confidence, honor, confidence, submission, confidence, humility, not no struggle, not no... <laughs> Some of you all can't even recognize your demon spirits. You can't recognize witchcraft spirits. You claim that you can see in the spirit, but you can't even see the demons on your own life. And this is a story of almost everybody. Don't be up there talking about, I see in the future that God about to do this. God said that. Don't be doing all that bull. If you can't see the demons around you talking to you, you off. I've met many people. 
that got prophetic titles on their name and couldn't see in the spirit. Couldn't see in the spirit for what matters. Your own life is first. Your own soul is first. Even the word said they prophesied in my name, but they never knew me. I never knew you, rather. Why would God Almighty Jesus be saying, I never knew you? You deem yourself prophetic to see everything else, but you didn't see yourself prophetic when the devil was using you in your own assignment. The devil is using you in your own task, your own calling. So saints, I'm saying this to you, and I'm going to be teaching on this. I'm going to hit this up. I'm going to hit this up this week. Because when you see how demon-possessed people are, and they can't even identify their demons, you know, and they, they live their whole life with this facade in their mind like they're good, and they don't even identify what's wrong, that God put them in a region, in an assignment, because he's trying to set them free. He's trying to deliver them. He trying to give them the true person that they've been declaring they was instead of you just professing about who you is and who you is and what you could do. They are now being placed in a boat to show it. You want to live your whole life in deception. You want to live your whole life just talking or do you want to live your life in a place of truth and grace? Grace and truth. Remember what the words say. Jesus came full of grace and truth. And that's why we all have a lot of people anointed today that God could use powerfully. Because many people want to run from the thing that God is saying, this is the whole purpose why I got you alive. I want to clean you up here. I want to deliver you here. I want to break your spirit. Some of y'all so high-minded and you're broke. You ain't even got a million dollars. You ain't even got a million dollars. You ain't even got two million. And you so high-minded. Some of y'all ain't even got $50,000, $100,000. And you so, you so haughty. And there's people that got 100 million. There's people that got 50 million. There's people that got sin on 20 million right now. And they humble before God. They're humble. They got houses. They got cars. They got money. They got jewelry. And they humble. And you, you on your way up. And you so quick to defend your own purity, your own righteousness, when God is making you righteous, he's showing you the behavior of righteousness. Don't resist the spirit of the living God. Let him change you and let him cleanse you. Cleanse you. John 15, one of my favorite texts because everybody needs it. The Bible says you're only clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. Some of you are making your own self clean. You, you making yourself clean. Jesus ain't saying nothing to you. And that's why you proclaim to be clean. When Jesus start talking to you, the real you start manifesting. The offended you start manifesting because you got witchcraft spirits on you. You're going to get delivered this week because I'm going to be hitting this up all on.